All right, I've started a new stream. Uh, I don't know why YouTube wasn't letting me connect uh, to the stream I made, and we'll see if this even works. I don't know what's going on. I haven't streamed in a week or so. How long is how long I've been gone, Bateman Jr.? About eight nine days. So uh, I planned on giving you guys a uh, a really good in depth video of what all went on in Texas. And here we go. I'm live now. I can see it here. I'm sorry about that. So, um, I don't know. Something about YouTube. I, I scheduled this stream, and it really wasn't wanting to connect uh, to YouTube. But, uh, man, what a week and a half. Actually, I was, I was like, I was gone from last Thursday night to this morning uh, over in Texas. So, uh, got me a little tan light here going from the Waterlands. Um, and I'm going to be honest, guys, as I get older... I think um, you definitely got to protect yourself from the sun. So wear a buff, wear sunscreen. Uh, you can see on my hands here. Uh, got to get some of the sun gloves. I'm gonna order some of those from Six Cents tonight. I think they call them like the Solix sun glove or something. So Big Man Junior in the house. Uh, he's also got about a half a pound of lasagna on his face. Go wash your face real quick. Yeah, go wash that face. So. What's up, Blake? Uh, we had a great, safe trip, uh, Mr. Gambit. It took me actually 16 hours to get down uh, to Willis, Texas at the Six Cents facility, which is where we met up. It's usually about an 11 half hour drive. So uh, went through a lot of ice, uh, a lot of snow. Texas wasn't prepped for that, but we were snowed in here too. So, uh, Caleb, honestly, at Choke Canyon for two days, the weather was really nice. It was sunny. I could wear shorts. Uh, and it was pretty crappy at OH Ivy. Uh, and to be honest, uh, you've watched Ben's first video there uh, that dropped, uh, Ben Milliken's video. And uh, when we got there, it was just a little bit better. Uh, the second day, uh, you'll see video this week, me and Casey Sobs, I absolutely train wrecked them. Uh, I don't mean we caught like 30. I, we probably caught 90 bass. So I got to edit this and take a lot of the dinks out because we did catch them. 15, 16 inches. Um, just warning you guys, I didn't realize it, but my GoPro mic, the wire was cut on it. Uh, I got cut the third day, so a lot of my footage is in and out, but I've got all the audio from Casey's GoPro, so it's going to work out. Shut that door, it's cold in here. It's going to work out where I can take the audio from his camera and sync it with mine, but uh, thank you. Uh, Hella Bass is getting everybody on my new stream. I appreciate that. I don't know what's going on, so... Uh, pretty crazy, but uh, what's up, Hookum1960? What's up, Ricky? Yes, Josh, we're on here. So I'm not going to do what I don't want to do is I'm not going to spoil it for the other guys involved. So there's some crazy, epic things that happened this week that I feel like uh, I don't want to tell their story. I'm going to let them tell it first, but I want to tell my story what happened. Um, let y'all know. Justin Royal, uh, cool cat. Me and him fished uh, two days together, really. Uh, we fished one day at Choke Canyon. Uh, didn't catch a lot of fish, which is why we left there. And uh, then we went to uh, OH Ivy. And my man, first cast with an umbrella rig uh, on the live scope with Captain Ronnie Kelly, jacked one up. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. But, dude, fishing with Justin Royal, humble dude. Uh, he's, he's excited about fishing and he's pure about it, man. He just loves fishing. He's not in it for uh, the sponsors or the clout or anything like that. Justin Roll just wants to catch fish. And it's really actually got me more excited uh, about fishing as well. So, um, yeah, I do have a cool cell phone story. Um, the day before uh, the guy, uh, Brett Cannon, caught the 1440, I, I netted that fish, but. I couldn't get any cool Instagram stuff because I dropped my cell phone in OHIV. Um, it sucks. But thanks to my wife, she hooked it up, got a new phone, already got loaded down and everything. But heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. Let's see. Did you toss that Six Cents 4K gizzard shad? Uh, I did not. Actually, uh, Mr. Gambit, to be straight up honest with you, I don't even think I touched a crank, crankbait all week. Uh, basically, Cap and Ron hooked it up. Uh, this was the main player, straight up, no law, no BS. Uh, a rig all week. Um, if I would have known, I would have brought 
five more of these. This is the Hog Farmer uh, five wire eight blade. That's what Casey did 90% of his damage with. I did a lot of damage with this too. Uh, the problem is we weren't prepared to go a rigging. So that right there, get some of these divine swim baits right here, and uh, a three eight uh, divine swim bait. That's like let's see if we got any good ones. Where's the I had more of these. They're all gone, evidently. Nope. We didn't steal any. I know you didn't. Uh, this color right here was really good. This is uh, the 3-2 in Pro Shad. Um, Ghost Ice Metal. And they make a Clear Water Rose. Uh, those were the main players on the Divine Swim Bait. And I got more around here. And I'm going to let you guys know... Uh, if you don't have any of those Divine Swim Baits for A-Rig, you better get them now because once Ben and Casey and I drop these videos, you guys are going to get them. Number one, I literally threw the same A-Rig a whole day and caught multiple, multiple fish and never had to change a bait. So the key on that is, and I'm glad I bought this, brought this box. This is my Swim Bait Terminal Tackle Box. So I planned on throwing Swim Baits, but I planned on warm stuff like that so yeah dude tactical bass and they love the hog farm rig no offense to them i was throwing the hog farmer before they knew what it was i'm just kidding speaking of tactical i saw tim little out there on ohiv uh he told me he caught a 10-3 um that's awesome and then casey and brett smashed it the next day but, uh i thought i had one left in here uh maybe i don't hmm. but uh Six cents makes some swim bait heads like this. This is the one with the weed guard, and this is a half ounce. But they make some quarter, uh, three sixteenths, and eighth ounce swim bait heads without the weed guard. Uh, they are amazing for an A rig. And so, yes, on the six cents website, there is a uh, new sack called the 14 pounder sack. It has everything you need minus the A rig. Uh, use my code Baitman. You can get 10% off that. Uh, get on Tackle Warehouse. Uh, get you some 5-wire, 8-blade A-rigs. I'm going to have a video this week of how to make the exact rig, some A-rig tips and tricks. But, uh, man, it was epic. So, i got to give a shout-out to Ben Milliken. So, y'all have seen Ben's video. And uh, so, he comes down to Choke and says, Hey, guys. Uh... It ain't happening at Choke Canyon. They caught a few fish, but not everybody was. You can have five hooks, John. Uh, so Ben says, let's get out of Choke. Let's go to OHIV. I've kind of figured these fish out. Uh, it didn't give us no waypoints, but he said, you know, you can come fish around me, figuring out what's going on. So we did that, and Ronnie and I uh, started on the first spot, and Ronnie found some fish on live scope just like that. Matter of fact, the Joker got on him so fast, I couldn't get my GoPro and camera gear on. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to film Ronnie. And I've got some great footage of a couple big bass. You watch them on the live scope. You watch the A-Rig come by. And then you'll see the bass come from behind. And they just absolutely crush it. And uh, I think his first or second cast caught like a six and a half, almost seven. So your audio is a bit kind of blowing out. I'm sorry, Rich. I'm not perfect, bud. So I'm going to try to fix that audio. Um, anyway, let's see, I'll answer, but, so Ronnie, in like two hours, he taught me how to live scope, uh, these bass, and, uh, I actually was able to do it on my own, uh, I got really, really windy, and Ronnie sat in the boat, and I ran the front, and, uh, I caught a few, so, number one, Ronnie Kelly, and Royal, and Ben Milliken was out here besides they can vouch for the bait, man. I actually can catch some fish. So it was an exciting uh, morning there on OHIV. Uh, Scott, I, di uh, I did get it. I haven't opened it yet. I did get it. Um, my wife let me know it came. Um, John, Texas, I believe, allows five hooks for a rig. Uh, spot sticker spinner bait showed up. Dude, I threw it a little bit at Choke Canyon. That water was just so muddy and cold, and those fish really didn't know what to do. So... We caught a 1205 at Ivy in 2014 on a KVD 2.5. Dude, that lake is awesome. I'm going to tell you right now, the new Texas state records in OH Ivy. You do not produce that many 
uh, 12 to 16 pound bass in a week span to not have a state record, let alone a world record. I think it could possibly be in there. Now here's the deal. Obviously it's getting tons and tons of fishing pressure this weekend. From Sunday to Thursday, there weren't 20 boats in the uh, parking lot. When we left, uh, I'm sorry, Sunday to Wednesday, when we left Thursday, there was like 50 boats in the parking lot. So. My dad and I went to OHIV back in 20, 2006 when I was a kid. We caught a poaching operation. Wow, that's crazy. Audio's a little low. I'll fix it. What about the jabber jaw? I throw this axis from uh, from from Six Cent, so I've never really thrown the jabber jaw. Um, like I said, um, never touched a crankbait. I threw a, a whale swim bait and actually hooked up on a good fish on the whale, and it just like pulled off. I don't think it got the whole bait, but. Those fish were keyed in on two things, gizzard shad, big balls of gizzard shad, and carp. And so a lot of these fish, um, a lot of these fish, um, you'd catch these great big 7, 8, 10, 14 pound fish. And uh, long story short, there would be uh, carp in the mouth. So I think, in many cases, we're talking these little common carp were feeding on the algae on this deep brush and trees, and these big bass were feeding on the carp. Dude, that's awesome, J.H. I was at Ivy, and you were listening to one of my Raw episodes. Dude, I think I need to bring Bateman and Raw back. If y'all agree, you know, smash the like button or leave a comment. Uh, I, I really enjoy doing that. So, uh, Colton, I actually used a Six Sense A rig. Uh, after I broke off the hog farmers, Casey actually um, used to make it a rig. Uh, someone's on here says I gotta answer this text. He said they're waiting for me. Welcome back to the Unbeaten Journey. Yep, hold on. Guess somebody's trying to say I'm not on the stream. I'm sorry, I don't know what YouTube is doing, you know, like I pre-made this, so. Yeah, I'm, my, Miguel, uh, I've heard good things about the Jabberjaw. Uh, I only know what I've thrown about the Axis, or used about the Axis, they're both great baits. Uh, no problem in owning them both as well, so. Uh, what's up with Milliken hiding the swim baits he was using? Yes, it was a prototype swim bait. I have some, and I am not allowed to show them. I got specific orders, said Baitman. I know you're gonna like this. Do not show him, and uh, it's badass. That's all I can say, and it's legit. Ben Milliken can prove that. Uh, it swims good, super realistic. David Thomas, man, I like that boat, man. That is sweet. I'm glad you got you in a boat that you like. No problem. Yes, I'll move to Texas 100%. Someone get me a job or give me a bass boat, and I'll start guiding at OHIV. Me and Ronnie Kelly will. Be Captain Ron and Bateman's boat flipping adventures. Um, new truck did fine, man. It actually got like 14 miles a gallon. I was impressed. Um, you know, Ian, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I think carp are slower moving. Uh, it's a bigger, quicker meal. Uh, I've seen a lot of bow fishing pictures from people at Ivy, and it's just full of carp. So. Um, I don't think bass really prefer one over the other. Uh, they're apex predators. Um, a big fish is always going to take an easy meal. I don't, you know, if there's no, you know, there's a lot of lakes that grow big fish that have rainbow trout and gizzard, and those fish prefer trout. I don't know. So, it's having loading issues for people. I'm sorry, Dustin. I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I couldn't even see my stream as well. So, um, I did get a notification. Uh, Hella Bass talking about um, YouTube's trying to fix some issues connecting for streamers. So, the new lake effect. When South Texas Lake get low for 10 plus years, they catch 20 foot of water. It slots out for big fish. Yeah, it's been crazy. Um, and the thing is about South Texas, or Texas in general, these lakes rotate. Like one year, choke is hot, or two years for that. Then Fork is, it was just still absolutely top 10 lake in the country. Um, but 
the Florida string bass, like a choke and lake fork, they do not like these cold water snaps. The difference at OH Ivy, it is fed by the Colorado River. So it's always got cooler water in it. So when this big cold snap happened, those bass weren't shocked. They already were prepared for the cooler water. They were hanging out deep, suspended, and that's where they remain. It also, uh, I think, helped catch them. Uh, Thank you for the $2. Make you holla, hella bass. I appreciate it, my man. Uh, I don't know if any of um, that stuff will pop up. There we go. Straight bass, homie. What's up, John D? Um, yes, yeah, so yak and bass, all these carp are baby carp. They're like 8 to 10 inches long. I've got some video of it, and you're going to see it this week. Um, it's crazy. I, the one swim bait I did not take, and I think I would absolutely would have wrecked them, um, at least the big one was the eight inch trash fish i have no clue why i didn't take it but i really think that trash fish would have did fine so let's see uh i'm gonna answer a few questions here uh caleb i did catch uh some doubles matter of fact i caught one about seven and one about four and a half pounds on the same a rig and i really thought i just hooked into one of them share lunkers I mean, it was amazing. What's up, Frank? Uh, I'm actually thinking about fishing the BFL as a co-angler, man, uh, next Saturday. Uh, I don't have nothing to do. If uh, wife can uh, watch the kids, uh, then I'm going to fish it. I know you'll beat me. Bob Davis, thank you for that $1.99 for that new phone fund. I appreciate it a lot, man. Uh, I actually had some cool pictures, but it is what it is. At least my wife was able to get my contacts back, but... Uh, so the story, I'm not 100% sure it's in Ivy, but I think there's a bunch of rabid dogs running around uh, the hotel we were at, and I have a feeling one of those dogs grabbed my phone, because I was in Ronnie Kelly's boat, and I thought I set it on like the trailer, the bottom of the trailer, and next thing I know, these dogs were around, and I couldn't find my phone. I really think one of the dogs took it and ate it. That's, my, that's a cooler story, so that's what I'm sticking with. Uh, Dennis, I did not try the mag draft. These fish, um, I don't think a mag draft would get down to. Um, some people are going to call BS on this, but we caught a lot of our fish in 50 to 40 foot of water. Uh, mm -hmm. Fish suspended at about 30 to 35. And uh, a mag draft would take forever to get down there. I threw a burrito baits gizzard, and the sink rate was just not fast enough. So swim baits tend to rise a little bit, so... KL Fishing, thank you for that $2. Make you holla on the phone fun. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Justin, we did stay at Elm Creek. Great people. Great people. Yeah. So we're fishing the A-Rig really slow. Basically, um, you know, like I'm with Ronnie. He's showing me the live scope. Find the area you want to fish. And then Ronnie would, you know, live scope the bass. We'd line up, up on it. And he showed me first, you, you make the cast. You want to make sure you're always bringing your A-Rig above the fish. Or any bait. Bass feed up. They don't feed down unless the fish are on the bottom. You know, like a jig bite, a worm bite. Those fish are mostly on the bottom. Uh, I mean, you'd count 10 to 12 seconds sometimes for your A-Rig to get around the fish. And you just... Just keep a slow reel. A lot of times they bite it, and if they miss, just keep reeling. And it was really hard to do. No problem, Blake, man. Thanks for joining in. Don G, appreciate that $5. Make you holla, man. Uh, means a lot to me. I, I'm glad to be back with you guys tonight. I love to show off a bunch of baits and stuff. And I'm probably really not going to stream that long because I haven't got to hang out with the kids a whole lot. You want to show them that drawing? So, uh, Six Sense Pro Staff Manager Zach Kinnear, he told Bateman Jr. the other night, he said, Yo, man, I need you to draw me a fish. Bateman Jr. has drawn Zach. Well, check that out. I think that's like a, that looks like Zach's fish. It's a hybrid largemouth smallmouth. You proud of that one? Yeah, that's a good one, dude. Yeah, dude, we got Bateman gear. Uh, links in the description for that, man. I've got, uh, I've got the Jank shirt. Uh, the Bateman logo, whatnot. 
Rick Purcell, I don't drink, so there was zero adult beverages going on. If you don't believe me, ask my man, Ronnie Kelly. He can tell you I was the most well-behaved man in South Texas last week. Dude, he is growing, isn't he, Darius? He's already wanting a new rod and reel. And I want a YouTube channel. And a YouTube channel. Y'all guys think Bayman Jr. has needs a YouTube channel? Whoa! What well with the five dollar make you holla? Appreciate it, my man. And real Nebraska fishing is gonna match it with a five dollar dono, guys. I appreciate it. Don't ever feel like you have to donate to the channel or anything. Uh, the best way to support this channel is always use the Tackle Warehouse affiliate link in the description. By the way, they're having a sale next week. I didn't see that. They're having a big sale next week. And uh, order from Six Cents Fishing. Use my code Baitman. And uh, in, in merchandise, that's the best way to support the channel. But I appreciate the donos. So, the guy from Georgia here, glad you're back. Rigging tackle from what near tomorrow. Big question is, what was your PB from the trip? Now, I didn't break my PB, which is nine four. Um, but I caught two fish. One was seven ten, and one was seven eight. Um, that was my biggest fish. I caught a bunch of four to five pounders and a bunch of three pounders. Uh, but down there, uh, to be honest with you, I know everyone says big fish are luck. The big ones just didn't bite my rig. That's how it went. All good. Still excited. Had an awesome trip. Went, I got to net Brett Cannon's 1440. And I'm thinking about like this. How awesome is it just to be in a situation where you're going to be there with a guy who breaks his PB and catches a share lunker at the same time? freaking time now my audio for my gopro on that's terrible but um it's crazy hey no problem real nebraska fishing victor xavier man thank you again for that five dollar make you holler i'm glad to be back on this saturday night so yep, uh, I got so i'm going to drop a video tomorrow night uh the first couple like day of the trip uh, me and Justin Royal fishing. Uh, he's probably going to drop his with me and him. It's on Choke Canyon. And uh, it was a tough day, but Ronnie Kelly's boat flips a freaking six pounder. It was awesome. So, um, not going to be a whole lot of fish catching because it was tough, but we got some good content in there. Uh, and it's me and Justin Royal's first time fishing together. Uh, so, that I'm going to upload a video every other day. And then the last video is the one I'm most excited about. I mean, you guys have seen the photos on the internet. 14-pounder Brett Cannon. I was there on that one. Documented the whole share lunker process, all that. We come back to talk to Casey, tell him about the share lunker deal. And dude's got another 14-pounder. And, and that's all I'm saying. And plus, you, on my TV, YouTube forces me to create an account. I don't know why. Oh, okay. What, what's that have to do with the price of eggs in China? Yeah, he wants to create a YouTube account. So, uh, Brandon Russ never, never threw a jerk bait, never threw a crank bait. I threw a scrounger. I threw multiple single swims. I did hook a fish on the whale swim bait, and uh, it was on for a bit, and come off. So, Patrick, thank you so much for that twenty dollar make you holla. I am far from the best YouTube fishing channel, uh, but thanks again, man. Uh, I'm really excited for what kind of content. It's coming out this week, not just from me, but from the whole Six Sense fishing team. It really kind of validated that we're just not a bunch of influence goobers that go pond hopping and tell you that uh, we put licorice on our baits and they're the best ever. Like, Ben went out, sight unseen on this lake, and figured them out. He helped the whole team pass along. He had guys like Ronnie Kelly out there that's got a ton of fishing experience. Uh, he, he taught Justin Royal how to live scope, how to catch his fish on an A rig, uh, and it was crazy, man. Royal caught on really, really well. So, dude, I bet Junior has as many art supplies as I've got crank baits. He got loaded up this Christmas. I appreciate that, Dustin Taylor, for the five dollar make you holla. It's been a while since I could do that. So, all right, good question, Ian. How deep were the fish suspended? Uh, well, here's the deal. We caught a lot of fish in 40, 50 foot of water. And um, they may be suspended in 35, 30, because you're fishing over the tops of these trees. 
some fish we caught shallow boats in 21 foot of water and they were you know just swimming around 12 foot i actually caught two bass uh, the last day near the surface like burning my a-rig in one was like in three foot of water and one was right up top uh so it's you just have to catch the right fish feeding some one bat one day with me and casey fished they were literally on the bottom you almost had to drag an a-rig and that's the day i really should have stayed with that well for a while and just really slow but it's hard to fish uh, a swim bait in 40 foot of water on a half ounce head so Uh, you're right, Shady Banks. Uh, me and Luke Duncan, we're, we're all eating. It was like me, Luke, Ronnie, Darren, some other people. And me and Luke were talking about how well Texas Department of Fish and Wildlife handles um, their lakes and the bass fishing. They know bass fishing is a big money maker and all that. And I just joked and said, yeah, uh, if the Asian carp thing would have happened to one, any of these lakes in Texas, they would have nuked them. Like, there would be no less commercial fish for them. And Luke 100% agreed. He said, absolutely, man. They take fishing that serious. Really wish uh, the Tennessee uh, Fish and Wildlife in Kentucky could get together. Just get rid of the carp. If you would see all this great bass fishing, what it's doing to that economy down there at OHIV and the other Texas lakes like Raver, it's amazing. It's 10 times better than giving a guy a nickel for a cart. So, Don G, that's a great question. I started out with a 20 pound uh, cigar, invis uh, cigar red label, believe it or not. Um, I didn't have any, and Ronnie let me spool up uh, my new dial with the two of 300. By the way, that's the best freaking A rig, big swim bait reel I've thrown in a long time. 20 pound red label. Uh, fluorocarbon never had an issue never broke a fish off unfortunately when you're fishing those treetops if you get hung that deep you're rigged it, it's a goner so I ended up swapping I used my Sunline braid FX2 uh, really smooth it, it was great um, and the thing is with the braid if you got hung in a tree you can pull it and it will bend the hooks out and you get your rig back 65 pound braid uh, never noticed a difference in the bite. Matter of fact, I actually caught most of my good fish throwing the braid. I think those fish were so deep, it really didn't matter. Mm. Let's see. All sale tax on outdoor supply in Texas goes toward Texas Park and Wildlife. That's awesome, Michael. Um, you know, on the license here in Kentucky, 99% um, of the money goes there. So, But... Uh, if you run a credit card transaction, the dealer loses money. So. Did you see in the MLF Red Crest video game fishing final day? I did not. Uh, I'll be honest, man. Uh, I don't think I think it's good for tournament fishing. Uh, after I cannot be a hater on pan optics, live scope, or anything else. I think uh, at the end of the day, you still got to catch them because I can tell you right now, we probably only caught. You know, less than 10% of the fish we ever saw on live scope. When you're on a lake that's got big ones and a lot of them, it's going to make it feel a lot easier. Um, you go take that live scope right now to Kentucky Lake. That's like my partner said. He said, well, I can have all the live scope and technology I want to, but if there ain't no fish around, there ain't no fish around. So, yeah, I agree, Chuck. A little bit better feel on the uh, braid than there is the fluorocarbon. Um, plus, I like to boat flip them. It's a blade... You got it done? Dude, that looks good. Bateman Jr., we got to send that to Papa Zach over there at Six Cents. That is definitely a hybrid smallmouth, largemouth. It's a mean mouth. Did you know that? That's what you call a largemouth and smallmouth mix. Or. Or. Mmm. Mm. So, anyway, I didn't want to. I'm not really going to stream a long time tonight. I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick because I really need to hang out with my wife and kids. But I'll answer some more questions. Anything you got, y'all want to throw at me? Um, do you know any decent spots on Kentucky Lake from shore from Paris Landing to Birdsong? I feel like the best bank spots are all private property or you can get to from shore. Uh, John, actually, uh, you can get on the LBL side of Kentucky Lake. All that's None of that's private property. If you got LBL permit, you're good. Uh, the back of Panther, uh, the back of Bird Bay, really good on the LBL side. And um, now here's the deal. I don't fish a lot from Paris Atlantic South. 90% of my fish is from Kentucky Dam to maybe Paris. 
And in fact, I would say out of that 90%, a hundred, uh, eighty percent of it's from the Damned of Blood River. So, uh, Ken, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Lake is a good area to fish off the bank. A lot of good fish there. You can fish on both sides of the bridge. Uh, Wildcat Marina is right there. You can fish in the back of Blood River. Uh, Paris Landing's got some great uh, fishing as well. So. I have an idea. Do you have an idea? I'm, I'm gonna build. I'm gonna make another one, but it's gonna be one that is like going like this. Why don't you make one with me setting the hook on a big old jank and my rod's bent over? I can't okay, do that. can't do that. Uh, Bateman, how does the Hummingbird 360 compare to the live scope? All right, so this is a good question. Um, me and Ronnie Kelly were talking, and I'm going to put this out there. If somebody get, said, here's $10,000, you can either have a uh, live scope, 360, or an old Trex. Uh, I would be throwing, I, I, I would have a live scope. I would 10 times rather be able to see the fish and cast to them than worry about my boat drifting. Um, in, in real time as well. So, uh, Don G, y'all have to excuse me on the tournament stuff this week. I didn't have a phone. I haven't been able to keep up. I'm not sure what uh, Crank Scott Martin was throwing, but I actually thought he'd do good in this tournament. He Those tough winter time tournaments, he's a good jerkbait, a rig fisherman. So, uh, no, I did not have to quarantine in Kentucky after my trip. Not that I know of, anyway. Super Spooker says, draw a giant buzzbait. Hmm. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, I wish I knew more of the south end of Kentucky Lake uh, to help you out. Um, but all that stuff on the LBL side is pretty accessible. When is the next day? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to post uh, my video starting Sunday. and I'm going to do every other day. Uh, and then I'll have a my live stream i'm going to try my best I, i've got a lot of issues with audio so hopefully guys you don't mind some wind noise i mean it's wind you go fishing it blows so nothing's going to be perfect but um yeah and in between there i'm probably going to have a video a tackle video just straight up about alabama rigs uh, some little hacks and some tips uh help you guys catch more fish you know, kind of the tactical bass and style. Uh, I'm not really, it's not going to really be about the best brand of A rig or all that, but just some little text I, stuff I've picked up that can help you catch a few. A few so, what's up, Joe? Um, new colors for the well flush coming probably down the road. I think the flush is so new in the well that the colors they got they're going to stick with for just a bit. Um, What's up, Dakota Cantrell? You, my man, are a hammer. Uh, so let's let's talk about these big giant smallmouth. Uh, I mean, so Ben catches a smallmouth. Luke Duncan catches the same one. It grows two ounces. And something else happened that I cannot talk to you about. Some people may have seen it, but there's a debate about it. I don't think it's a debate. It's a smallmouth. But guys, that lake record smallmouth was broke three times in literally four days. Yeah, dude, Mark did have a great tournament, man. He's going to be sitting well in the angler of your points. I'm really excited. I want him to go ahead and lock down that classic qualification. That way I can go back. Um, I'm ready to start filming some more. Um, yeah, it does blow, Darius. Um, I did not. I, so here's the deal, Dustin. I didn't take my A-rigs with me. I had no clue this bot was going to go down. Luckily, Casey said, I never leave, go go anywhere without a giant box of A-Rigs. He said, if you're a tournament fisherman, you have to have them. You never know when you might need those dudes. So, shout out to Casey. He had the hog farmers. I threw a young umbrella rig a little bit. It got down, get skinny, and I was throwing some six cents A-Rigs that were made like years ago. But, I honestly feel if you're not throwing an a-rig with blades unless you're in a super clear water situation maybe up north small mouth you got to have blades on there mm, would you send me the og sun perch bomber uh i've got one right here this is so this one is the sun perch here from bomber believe it or not this is actually different than the og one 
Um, the OG one, where this is bright pink, is a lot more dull. Dude, I had an amazing time. Uh, unfortunately, I burned up a ton of vacation time, so I don't know how many more trips I'll be going, but maybe me and Jake Lawrence can sneak down to Pickwick a couple times this week, a uh, uh, year. Um, that's why I kind of want to fish the BFLs. If you guys would like to see me do absolutely terrible... At dude, why are you breaking crayons? I have to pay money for those, dude. Don't be sitting there smashing them. <sighs> These kids, they don't understand the value of a dollar, I tell you. Um, what's good, Simon? Yeah, dude. That Victor, I was on the same lake, man. It was just, I was just texting Ben. I cannot believe it happened, and I'm glad to be a part of it, man. I mean, Dixie Viper rig. I've never even heard heard of it. I'd love to see one, Dakota. I'd love to see one because uh, I got to experiment with a few different ones this week. But you know, me, I'm pretty much all in on the hog farmer. I don't know if Scott can build this fast enough. I love the epoxy head on this thing. Um, it's just built really, really tough. So obviously when you throw it, you know, you want to spread these things out a little bit better. But it makes a BFL rig as well. Yeah, dude, I saw uh, Ozark Shad Flat A. Uh, buddy said it went for $98. Yeah, man, uh, I really feel like if you got a rig, you got to have blades on it. Maybe if they get a ton of pressure, no blades, but I could tell a difference when I had to switch a rigs and I caught like two fish and I actually put some owner beasts on there, the small flashy swimmers to make it kind of weedless. I just, one, I didn't get as many bites, two, they didn't hook up that well. So I dug around and found another, I don't know, it's called a frenzy rig. I smashed them good on it. But that fringe rig had plenty of blades, and I could tell instantly those fish like the blades. There's a starving marine that would love to eat that crayon somewhere. That's right. What? Don't be eating your crayons. Don't be breaking them, okay? Because now they're hard to color when you break your crayons. That's why they got a point on them like a pencil. Let's see. What sales tackle warehouse going to be doing? So I've heard through the grapevine they're starting to sell. I think the 4th and goes to the 8th. Uh, I think it's like 15 or 20% off. I don't know. But I want to ask you, tell you guys when the sale starts, come back to the Bateman channel. I'll be putting links on Instagram and Facebook. Use my link. That'll help me out. Um, I need some new GoPros really bad. I just need one. I've done figured out you don't need four or five. You just need one really good one. Leave an old one as a backup. And uh, I really need to upgrade it. And I had too much trouble with my, my threes and the microphone. So. Dude, Spunk Shad. So let me tell you right now, uh, well, me and Jay Roy, I don't want to ruin, ruin the video. Let's just say this. I'm not going to ruin the video, Lip Ripper. But I think me and Jay Roy might have proven about that Spunk Shad. It's really good. But uh, for those guys that have been wondering about the flush as a chatterbait trailer, oh, my gosh. Dude, that flush is amazing. On a jackhammer or chatterbait that fork tail dude it's like a zacco with just a little bit faster act like the zacco is really tight so the flush is really tight but the back part of that fork tail whips back and forth really hard so you got a really inline body and just that fork tail is whipping hard man it looks really really good uh so i know i know roll i'm not going to spoiler alert just watch jay royal's video he's going to show you what that thing does so um, what rod did I use on the A rig? To be honest with you, I used the Millican Fishing Big Swim Bait Rod. Um, dude, I was impressed. Uh, Casey used the eight foot Divine Extra Heavy Rod. I like the Millican Fishing Swim Bait Rod. It feel it it, fit, it fishes like a 796 uh, Dobbins. Um, it's not the lightest rod, but man, it's got plenty of backbone. It's sensitive. Rod was not an issue. I had a Tatula 300, that's the new one. Dude, that 300 will absolutely wing some baits out there. So, Shady Banks, uh, all right, I'll put a link up for TW. Uh, it'll be in the description of the video. I'll link, uh, I'm going to link my line, the hog farmer baits, uh, and a couple different A rigs uh, in the description of this video. It'll be my TW affiliate link uh, for these things. Um, and then everything else will be lit 
link to the Sixth Sense website. So if Sixth Sense is out of stock, make sure you go to your local dealer, anywhere else, Tackle, tackle Warehouse. Um, and by the way, if you're looking for frogs, Sixth Sense, I can't tell you the number, but they got enough frogs, they ain't going to run out. Um, they're on their website. Uh, I love the frog. I would love to go to OHIV and get on a frog bite. That'd be awesome. So, A Bay, any experience with soft plastic lure making? Start on my channel. It's a whole different world. Mitsum would do it most. I don't have any experience. I don't. I like to buy baits. I don't like to build baits. Uh, I'd love to see what you got going, uh, Miguel. I'll, I'll go down there and check them out. Um, it. I'm afraid if I got into making my own plastic baits. Uh, it just start another hobby I don't need to get into, but uh, do it molds are awesome. I was at a local tackle shop and bought my first jank juice crankbait. That's awesome, Sean. So rumor has it the super six cent sack this month has got a C10 jank juice in it. A lot of people are really loving this the sack. So thank you, Hella Bass has posted the TW link. Let me make sure it's the right link. Uh, and let's see, he sent you all to like. Yep. It's the correct link. Thank you. You are a great moderator. So, Six Cents got a blade bait, uh, Super Soaker. I saw something this week. I can't talk about it. I think you'll like it. Uh, Axis is going to be in stock pretty soon. Uh, I'll check it out, Miguel, man. Uh, Bateman, you ever throw the Norman Weed Walker? I have not, man. I have not. All right, so colors recommendation on a Vega Frog. Going to be really simple here. Get you a white, uh, get you a black, and get you a natural color, whether that's a brown or green. I like a red, a black, and a white. That's about the only three. Um, but natural colors you can never go wrong with. You can't go wrong with black or white. If you can't get white, Find a shad color. Uh, I've had a really good look, luck on those three. And so let's just say four. Bluegill imitator, a natural color, a black, and a white. Um, if I had to choose my two favorites out of that, I'd go with a bluegill color or a black frog. Ooh, man, I don't throw any 16th to 8th ounce hair jigs, but uh, that spider rod would be able to do it, man. Um, dude, I love the Tatula Elite rods, by the way. They're awesome. Dude, jank juice is the deal. I wish we had a jank juice frog, so. Yep, Gillikin, that's a good bluegill imitator, man. Um, how does the whale compare to the booster swim bait? Uh, I'm not a big fan of the booster swim bait, to be honest. It rides high up in the water. Uh, the whale, I'm going to tell you all right now, the whale is like a small version of like a cross between the babe and the mag draft. It has this very, the, the tail kick is very horizontal. It doesn't do a lot of looping. It's a horizontal kick, but that head, the head movement in the whale is amazing. Uh, even when I rigged it on a jig head, you could still feel that tail uh, down there. So I really, really liked it. Matter of fact, this whale right, here's a whale right here. This is the. Whoa, a barking spider hit me. So this is Clearwater Rose. This is the color Divine Swim Bait we were catching them on, by the way. But, uh, dude, 5 watt Beast Hook is what you want. Or get the 6 cents. 5 watt Hook pairs up even better. 6 cents makes um, bottom hooks. But, yeah, the well, man, this tail goes back and forth just like that right there. And then the head shakes with it. The fins are designed to... Uh, help it ride straight matter of fact when I caught that one fish it come off it ripped the fin off but it still swam really good so if I was going to get it any colors I'm definitely getting clear water rose in the well and uh, I would get this one right here this is ghost ice minnow I would definitely get ghost ice minnow uh, in the well it's a really really awesome color and the bluegill colors are nice too so you got some purple coach dog repaints? Man, that's awesome, uh, Robert. I love me some flat A's. Uh, I'm getting ready to fish Kentucky Lake pretty hard for the next month or two, and uh, can't wait. I'm going to fish some tournaments. 
Uh, so if you guys want me to document my tournaments, whether they're buddy tournaments or BFLs, let me know. Because y'all going to see me get embarrassed a lot. I'm not scared of it either. Yeah. So the big, uh, the big thing about uh, frogs is people say frogs don't matter until only the bottom. Uh, I actually disagree with that. I'm not saying the very top, but the side colors on a frog matter a, a lot, I believe, because I've got my butt kicked by a guy throwing a red frog with a white belly, and I was throwing a white frog. So I'm like, man, this, and this guy, to be honest, he's not a great frog fisherman, but I took mine off. I put on a different frog, red, white belly. Guess what? I started catching them. I think when the frog is working, it's slashing through the water. And a lot of times it's getting some rolling action and they key in on that flash, especially in clear water. So, uh, six odd beast on a 316. That's what I like, Chuck. You can even go to an eight odd if you want to. If you know how to work a frog, the side will flash. That's right. Yak and bass. Uh, some frogs do it better than others, but I really think color does matter. I think they get keyed in on certain shades. Whether it's a bluegill, a black, or white, or even a yellow, uh, and those bass like it. Yeah, the rising sun was made to be up in the top of the water column. You can redneck it like me and throw a big jig head on there to swim it out deep, but for the most part, it's a fish above grass or fish through bushes and stuff like that. It's an awesome bait. You can almost wake that thing. Correct, Tim. I think in the shallow water, they do see uh, see it better. So Now, if you're fishing a mat or something, I'll just throw black or, or white. I don't think it matters too much. But obviously, there's a difference between pitching a frog and skipping a frog around bushes, shallow cover, and mat fishing. Dude, our top water was short, too. So, What's up, Casey Bowen? I appreciate you joining in the stream. I'm not going to stay on real late tonight. I got to get back used to going to work and all that stuff. I actually going to be trying to get as much video content out as I can. I'm going to be slower than other guys, but it's going to happen. Dude, Frogville is nasty. That's one color I don't have, so I'm going to have to get on the site and order a few. Ooh, I have seen the Lazy Swimmer. It looked really awesome. So... Guys, I, I want to let you know, I appreciate you all. Make sure you smash the like button, everything. Uh, give me a comment after the video. Um, I don't know, put something cool, you know. Let's see. What is the best swim bait to swim through lay down trees that are two feet deep, but the ends are over 20? So the trees are two feet deep, but they're... Man, I, I'll be honest, um... Uh, you know that rising sun's really good for a shallow swimmer. Uh, you can you can rig a Scottsboro tackle the same way. I like a hollow belly, like a Bastrix. Um, the good thing about a rising a non hollow belly bait like a rising sun or let's see what else like a ignite uh, like the Scottsboro style you can sk skip them really really well. Let's see here. Bow spawn makes a good swim bait, so. Dude, it is, it is about that time. Kentucky Lake, the high temp was 41 degrees. Once it gets about that 43 to 45, it can be really good. Uh, Mag draft is a good option as well, Dustin Taylor. Thank you there, Dakota. Um, if they have a bunch of frogs, what's the chances of one being in next six cent? I don't know, man. I don't exactly know their criteria for choosing. Uh, sometimes... You know, they have told me straight up it's not overstock baits because I remember a few months ago they were worried they didn't have enough of a certain bait to uh, put in there because it was really popular. So that's one thing you won't see is just a bunch of junk from Six Cents. You know, hey, they put Jank Juice C10s in there. 
and uh, it wasn't long ago they were sold out on them. So I'm not a big fan of the Smash Tech, Jeremy. I know some guys really like them. Has I think they're good baits, just never worked well for me. Um, they do tend to kind of, you know, plagiarize some other popular baits, but whatever. Uh, Simon, yes, there's lots of good six cents lures coming out. There's a new swim bait. Um, obviously, you'll see it in Ben's video. There's some hard swim baits. Uh, and there's some other stuff I'm just not allowed to talk about, to be honest with you. Dude, floating fly is awesome here. Del Hollow Lake, Lake Cumberland. Guys use it a lot. Tim's Ford's a big floating fly lake there in Tennessee. Man, Dakota, I didn't even get to see it. Uh, evidently, Ben Milliken's the only one that's got one right now. Um, supposed to be legit. I can't wait to see it. So That's right, Straight Cash. So, uh, I know other companies are starting to claim they have the best sack. In fact, they had the best sack, so they had to copy Bass Mafia and Six Cents sack, um, which I thought was ironic, but I suspect no less from that company, especially when they claim that all their... Uh, it's not time for a Bateman rant. I'm not in that mood. We had a really positive week. We're going to keep that positive energy going. Uh, my favorite spunk shad color, uh, man, is just solid white, and there's a white with like a silver top, and let me grab this one, I'll show you this. <clears throat> this one's really good, I don't know the exact color, but it's like a smoke. Um, but you see it's got the, the silver glitter and blue flake. Man, this is awesome. I love putting this on the back of a spinnerbait and a chatter chicken. Just get a little bit of flash off this as well. I don't know the exact color on this thing, but man, I like it. I will link these spunk shads, uh, the tackle warehouse on that, and the A-Rig. Man, these things are just straight up sexy. So this is the big one. This is the four and a half inch spunk shad. I refuse to buy the jackhammer. I just paid sixty dollars for a super magnum spook, dude. I'm gonna tell you, me and me and Luke Duncan and some other guys, we had this description. Someone in our fish camp was like, "Oh, you can't tell me a regular chatterbait isn't as good as a jackhammer." Everybody there, but that one person said, "I said the same thing until I started catching them on a jackhammer." So, yes, that's the five five. I'm sorry. This is a really good one too. I love the spunk shad. Scott has sent me so many of these things. That's kind of like your blue glimmer, pro blue. Man, that thing, that is, that's the deal, man. But a lot of guys think, man, I'm going to get this bait and it's going to go, woo, and it doesn't. It just has a really subtle, it's like a shimmy. It just shimmies back there. Man. So, if you want to throw them on chatter baits, I suggest the smaller version. Um, scrounge your heads and stuff get the big version and see they even make black and blue for you Florida guys put that sucker on there let's see we're going to Dell tomorrow after some of those bronze bombers Dell ought to be good man ought to be good what's up St. Chris I'm back to streaming man just I got about I'm going to go for about five more minutes tonight uh, and then I've got to like make a thumbnail and all that crazy stuff I might not even make a thumbnail until tomorrow um, my fantasy fishing team did all off. Uh, Caleb, that bait, the spunk shed, was designed for a scrounger head. Matter of fact, it was that's how the spunk shed come about. It was made for the scrounger head. It's it's amazing on there. Yeah, so basically, the ten, the Yoda worm is basically a spunk shed. This thing's been out for like two and a half, almost three years. And Yoda Worm just came out. Um, dude, let's, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be honest. I'd love to throw the Yoda Worm, but I can't do it. Knowing who, knowing who is behind that thing, I just can't do it. That's right, Tim Mater. You can't beat a jackhammer. There's a reason they cost what they do. It's certain colors still out. Uh, dude, I love the jackhammer. I'm going to tell you that Stealth Blade. Hey, man. Bateman was wrong. J. Royal put it on me with the stealth blade. Not going to lie. Now, we didn't catch that many fish, but he showed me something on that stealth blade. So, uh, 
there's a time and a place for that finesse style chatterbait, and I'm going to grab me a few more stealth blades. And Tim, Tim Maynard, thank you for the $10. Make you holla. Need a place to rent on Kentucky Lake for spawn. Uh, Sycamore, I would look, uh, you know, I know you mentioned me. Moore's Resort, I would. you could stay at Ken Lake or Kentucky Dam. They've got cottages, cabins there. They're always pretty nice. Those are state parks. Um, I think, uh, what's the other place? Uh, Bee Spring Lodge is awesome. I can't remember if they got cabins, but I love Bee Spring. Matter of fact, don't fish there in the spawn. That's my hole. Stay away. Yes, sir. Golden, golden shiner, bruised pumpkins. That'd be great. Well, yeah. So I, I, you're right, Rick. The water was cold, man, and uh, it definitely. I think it it made a difference. We didn't catch that many, but. I need to take it to a true test. Take it up to Lake X side by side. So, Well, see, here's the deal, Nate. We were fishing grass lines. So you'll see on the video tomorrow, probably on my, Royal's channel and probably my channel as well. Uh, Royal's really good at what he does, man. I'm going to let you guys know that. That dude has grabbed YouTube by the tail. He's great talking on camera. He's great getting the footage. He works at it. I'm not going to lie, I don't get to fish as often as some of these guys, so I kind of slacked on my camera work, and I fished. Uh, I'm always used to being the guy behind the camera doing all the crazy stuff, and one of these days I'll step my game up. So Now, you kind of make a video about baits, man, I got you. At a little tackle show last weekend, a guy was selling jackhammers for $10, he got a little bit of money. Bro, you didn't buy jackhammers. You bought some straight-up Ronnie Kelly crack hammers. Dude, cast steak is a good one, Shady. All right, guys. I'm not going to stay on much longer. Matter of fact, I told my wife I'd watch a movie with her tonight. I uh, hadn't seen her in like 10 days. So, anyway. I'm going to jump off here. Um... Uh, Look for a video sometime tomorrow night between 8 and 9 o'clock. And uh, it's going to be me and Jay Royal fishing down at Choke Cannon Reservoir. Special guest, my man, Captain Ronnie Kelly. Uh, do me a favor. Leave a comment after this video. Uh, let me know something you're looking forward to seeing on the stream this year or whatever. Uh, thanks again, guys, for joining in. We'll drop some more viewers in here. I'm going to keep streaming where I got 180 or 2,000. We're going to get Epic Eric on here soon. He's having an epic trip as well. So thank you guys so much. Uh, use the links in the description of the video. I'll put that stuff in there, and I'll find me a thumbnail. Thanks, guys.